<laughs> Not right for the right for the situation. Okay, let's get rolling. Um, before I forget it, because I forgot it on the floor, um, I think I think everybody knows we got pensions tomorrow at nine. So if you go on pensions tomorrow, nine a.m. When I did pensions, we'd get up at seven thirty. I don't know. They're really slacking these young folks nowadays. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's keep going with the ones that are jointly assigned for, for right now. Uh, 66, Housing Community Development, Office of Digital Inclusion. So Senate Bill 66, uh, EHG is primary on this. The bill would establish a new Office of Digital Inclusion in DHCD. Uh, this would be the successor to the Office of Rural Broadband. Um, with some expanded responsibilities. The bill requires uh, funding for uh, and the operating budget to employ two additional staff. You should have uh, a reprint with the EHE amendments. And I'm gonna kind of walk you through the main points relevant to uh, BNT. On page three, the bill is introduced was repealing the Rural Broadband Assistance Fund, the EHE amendments. Um, keep that fund and then make a change so that the interest earnings to that fund are credited to the fund, similar to uh, two new funds that are also added um, further How much more the, total does this cost us? Uh, I'm sorry? How much total does this cost us? So the fiscal note, um, it has, uh, it's, a, it's about 150 uh, and grows for the two positions. The fiscal 22 cost is 1.3 million due to some one-time costs. Uh, the bulk of that, about 900,000, uh, was for generating a map. But in the EHE amendments, um, if you look on page five of your reprint, uh, line 12, they made some changes. The bills introduced required this office to create a map. Um, the amendments alter that to have the office create a website that houses a publicly accessible map. Um, apparently, I think, I don't know if Senator Ophrith, um, if you want to chime in, I think that there's expectation that the FCC is already working on this and that that map would be able to be um, used on this website as, um, and that would save some costs on that, that first year one-time cost. Senator. Senator Ophrith. Thank, I know Senator Eckert has been with me working on this from the beginning, and, and we have maybe one tweak we need to make in addition. But yes, the, the goal here was that the FCC does a map. It's not great, but it's a start, and that we could improve upon that map instead of creating a whole new map that would obviously save some time and effort, but also uh, some, some money for the state. So that was the purpose of the amendment. You're not on, Senator. Oh, thank you. Because the FCC's just received funding to update their mapping, so that's why that'll decrease that cost. Okay. So we're talking a little over a million dollars. Is that what we're talking here? Bottom line, total? Yes, sir. Oh, lots of senators, right? <laughs> Senator Alford. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. I think uh, Philip did some back of the envelope uh, without without the, the granularity of the map the bill originally envisioned. Philip, if it's 150 in, in two positions, uh, yeah. it's hard to yeah. estimate the, the new map, but. Okay, so the, so the, the million dollars he talked about was part, part of, you're gonna be able to modify the exist. Very good. Yes. Senator Hecker. No. Senator Rosapat. Thank you. Um, this is for, probably for Senator Elfrith. The thing I liked about this bill was the map. Um, so do we have an ETA for when the FCC is going to get its new improved map A, and B, once they get their new improved map, what is the ETA for us to make it even better so we have like a real accurate map of this? Because that is critical to 
getting done what you want to get done. I, I agree that the map is, is key. Uh, you, you might have better insight with the Biden administration than, than I do, Senator. <laughs> but, but it is, a, as you know. A, don't a, give a, him <laughs> that. <laughs> I don't, but I appreciate the fact that you have that impression. <laughs> But that is, a, as you know, a major priority. I, I don't know on the exact, I think it's within the year, Senator Eckert might, I think it's within the calendar year. And then we did also some some amendments that came from EHE. We worked with Senator Simon Air to move up the overall uh, goal of this. It originally called for universal connectivity by 2029. We've moved that up to 2026. So we're kind of accelerating this whole, whole system. Okay. No, I appreciate that. And I actually was thinking in the context of the Biden infrastructure initiative uh, because broadband is, is up there, and they're going to roll that out sometime in the next couple of months once they get through this current package. Right. And that's really kind of why I'm asking the question mm -hmm. is I just want to be sure we're ready to go. Right. And so what is there in the bill now as amended that requires the department, I guess, in this office to be ready to go, to have a plan that executes getting us to 100% by 2026 based on the improved FCC map and our own map? Well, I think as it stands, the office of rural, Governor's Office of Rural Broadband is doing a great job for the rural communities, and there is no centralized plan for the rest of the state. So that's why we, we are passionate about getting this done as quickly as possible. Does it, this require a plan? It does require yeah, a plan. Senator Elizabeth, uh, bottom of page 6 and then going on to page 7, um, subsection C, on or before July 1, 2022, the office shall prepare a statewide plan. Okay, so there's a plan by the, next summer. Um, uh, 2025 and 2026 states that have been moved up. I understand. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good bill. Okay, is there a motion? So moved. Favorable. Yes. Oops. Did we okay. not get the amendments on that you needed? No, we d We have a couple of other oh. amendments. We just need to clarify. Um, should I get those to fill up, or I can give you the concept now? Um, we just, first of all, there's uncodified language to keep the original function in the office. Um, office of uh, Housing and Community Development. But the amendment... Uh, reads that the bill does not impact funding, and we want we would like to see explicit language under Section 6, 5-104, which details that the office will continue to build the rural broadband assets in partnership with local governments. We've worked with all of our providers on the shore, and they already have a backbone, I mean, a framework in place, and we want to continue that because they've been working on this map. We've been pushing this for a long time. I've been pushing this for 20 years. Um, so we want to see this realized. So that's one. And then um, we needed to have the Rural Broadband Assistant Fund in place. It really hasn't been used to the extent that it would, um, but we want to make sure that that fund is not in commerce and it's over with Department of Housing and Community Development. So that's the second one in commerce is okay with that. And then we talked about the mapping. So they're the two additional ones that the rural, um, Maryland Rural Caucus has worked on with this. Are people comfortable with the concepts that she just put out there? Anybody a problem? Okay. All right. Is there a motion for this as amended? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Rosa Pep. Okay. Unanimous. Okay. Pass that one on. Senate Bill 415, Public Financing Act. Senate Bill 415, this is uh, a bill EHG is primary on. Uh, the bill is um, almost 100% uh, identical to legislation you all passed last year. This has to do with um, the public financing uh, for campaigns. And the BNC relevant, uh, I think, portion is there's some mandated funding for the fund. Um, I do have um, Jared from Board of Elections here in case there's any questions about the policy changes in the bill. It does set up some new um, 
structure in terms of uh, matching for the publicly financed campaign uh, uh, funding, funding uh, drawdowns. But the bill requires uh, a fiscal 23 appropriation of at least $4 million to the fund. Um, currently, as of today, the fund has, I believe it's $3.825 million in it right now. The bill also requires that um, three years before an election, um, the governor be notified of, of the amount um, available in the fund so that uh, appropriations can be made to fund at least two campaigns in the primary and one campaign in the general. That would be um, each campaign can have um, uh, a maximum state uh, contribution of $3 million. So for the primary, you would need um, six to meet that threshold. And then for the general, uh, another three. Okay. So what are these amendments before us? So the amendments before you, if you go to page... Um, so it says four right now. It's adding four to the to the 3.85, right? Correct. And then there's an ongoing for future to have minimum amounts of funds in there. The amendments you have before you deal with um, how the state dollars are drawn down for matching. Um, as introduced, uh, the way it works is, is the, the matching is weighted towards the lower end of the contributions. So the first 50 in eligible private contributions um, as introduced, would receive $9 from the state fund for each dollar raised. Uh, the amounts before you change for the first 50 and second 50, it goes from $9 and $5 to $8 and $6. Okay. So it has nothing to difference. do with the, it has nothing to do with the, uh, the overall number. It has nothing to do with the overall amount of, of uh, funds that are uh, required to be appropriated or the amount available. So, to so is this can't amendment? Just alter so is this amendment being sent over by Senator Pinsky for us to vote on? So then the bill's finalized. Is that the idea? He, they didn't. They didn't do that amendment. They did that amendment. They did this amendment. So it's already in here. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Does anybody have any questions or issues about? Yeah, I, I have about this? Um, what do they do if if they get too many candidates that want to be a part of this? What if, what if everybody in, every candidate in Montgomery County or every state candidate in, in Montgomery County wanted to go for public financing? What we're, would happen? We're only, this is only for the gubernatorial. Just, okay, this is, that's all this one is, it's just gubernatorial. Okay, okay. Yes. Senator? Yep. Where was it, Pat? Yeah, this question is sort of along the lines of mine, so just big picture so I understand this. This doesn't change who can qualify. It simply changes how money goes out to those who do qualify and how much money is there to pay for that. That's all the bill does. Is that right? Uh, I'd let Jared weigh in on that. I mean, there are some changes in terms of what counts towards um, eligible contributions as far as drawing down the state funds. Yes. So, uh, Senator, it does change uh, the qualifications into the program. So currently, you would have to, it, you have to raise eligible contributions of 10% of the expenditure limits. Now you have to raise, um, it, it's on page uh, seven. Basically you have to raise a hundred, uh, you have to get from 1500 eligible private contributions, which are Maryland registered voters uh, for a total of $120,000. So it changes that's, the that's qualification. The new, Formula. Qualification for it, it. so it changes the so qualification. It's, it's, it's stricter than before. Any other any other changes to law? Or is that it? Well, I, I mean, the, the the program itself is different. It's more modeled after the the modern uh, current uh, public financing systems, which is capping the amount of public contributions that a candidate can receive uh, versus the expenditure limits of the past. Uh, so it's it's taking the, the current program and modernize it in, to the and adapting it to the current situations uh, that uh, campaigns face uh, with reality. But at the same time, making sure that there's uh, more accountability to uh, Maryland registered voters as well. So uh, in order to uh, qualify under the current program, 
for public financing, all you need is to just hit the 10% threshold of $250 from just individuals, and that can be from outside the state. Here, it's $1,500 from registered voters with a total of uh, – Hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So that, that okay. It, thank you. So it, it changes the qualification. I got it. Okay. Thank you. No. Okay. So uh, have they raised it up to um, have the end game of nine million dollars in the fund? Have they done that already, or are we doing that? Uh, well, you wouldn't necessarily get there. So there's currently three point eight. No, I, I got uh, which that. will be available in fiscal 2022. So that would be the um, upcoming primary. And, and Mr. Demers, and you, then you it, suggested that we need $9 million to accomplish the three, the two primaries and the one general. Is that accurate? Yes. And right now there would be 3.8, there's 3.8 currently. And then the bill for fiscal 23 would mandate four, which would, you know, be enough for the, the three for the general. Uh, and, and and one for the, the one for the primary as well. Okay. Do we need to add five point one five million into this fund to get the nine million dollars for the general to, to make it through the election? Is that what we need to do? Would that do it? Yes. 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 That's what I'd like to do. Can we move that? Well, so the issue is for fiscal 2022, you can't mandate the funding. I understand. We don't like mandates. <laughs> right, but if we, we, if we put the money in, the remainder money in for, for fiscal 23, that should accomplish it, shouldn't it? Well, except that the, the primary would be selected in fiscal 22. Yeah, the primary is in June of 22. I understand. So we got a little cash flow issue more than anything else. Yes. Um, yes. Not to confuse the issue more, but I do want to come back to the question Senator King raised. These calculations of how much money we need is independent of the number of candidates who qualify, right? I don't understand. Yes, they're making it. If I, if I understand what, what you guys have come up with or thought about in this context is just sort of making an assumption. Right. That if, uh, if we got, I mean, if we got three or four primary candidates who wanted to participate, it, bust the bank. it, it would certainly, yes, it would bust the bank. And how does that right. work? Does it just, do they just, keep getting until it draws down and it runs out of money? Is it first come, first serve? Right. So, yes, it would be a first come, first serve uh, process for that. Uh, it would be in regulations as well uh, in order to uh, uh, pay it out. Um, but uh, by just even having this minimum here, it, it at least guarantees uh, at least one person to hit that that threshold uh, and feel as though that they can, with the 3.8, they, they can they can qualify in the primary, get the max, and then know that there'll be at least um, monies in the general for them. Okay, Senator King. So if by chance there are like four candidates and they, so they don't get as much money to run a campaign, when that money's gone, can they then go out and raise money? Within the limits. So they still would always have to have, they can only, when you get into this program here, you're, you're, you're basically signing a, a pact with the state saying in order to take the public contributions, they will not raise uh, from uh, basically uh, from businesses, uh, political action committees, and they're also taking only $250 from individuals. Wow. But they can, they can raise as much from individuals in and out of the state up to the $250, as much as they can. Okay. I apologize. I see Senator Corbin down there. You need to wave a little when you push it's that right. button. I'm just enjoying a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, um, it's not really specific even to this one. When these bills were um, seconded, what was the committee vote in, in EHE? 
Sorry, what was that? What was the committee vote? It's not. It's not showing up on the uh, on the system here. Uh, let me check with EHV Council real quick. Let's see if I have that. I do. It's just helpful on these ones for yeah, a second. Yeah, nine to two. I'm sorry. Nine to two. Who were the Who were the opposed? Gallion and um, Carosa. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yes. Uh, unless I'm deeply misunderstanding this, this is a mess. And I, I've been for public financing before it was cool, but this is a mess. And I'm wondering if it it might take a little thought, and we have other bills we might want to deal with and come back to this. Okay. <laughs> Senator, <laughs> Senator Young. I'm willing to wait if you want to do that. Okay. All right. Uh, well, the only the only problem I have, I mean, I, we've got Mr. Demaris here. I I hate to. Huh? Yeah, I'd like to get questions answered at this point. Actually, to tell you the truth. Okay. So, um, Senator Young, if you have uh, you got questions. Well, a question or comment? I, I think. I think we're getting ourselves into trouble if one person could get in and grab all the money before anybody else got any. And uh, the other person might have signed the pledge and then we can't do our part. So I, I would suggest that we have an amendment on this that however many candidates that file, you divide the money up equally. and. You know, let them let them go to that limit. And if so, if there's four candidates and one of them decides not to participate, then divide it three ways. But I I don't know how we could do a bill and not end up with some lawsuit that uh, I raised nine million dollars before Senator Rosenpep raises any, and he he can't get it. Uh, I, I just think it's opening our, ourselves up to a real problem if we don't put something in there to make sure that there's equality in terms of the candidates getting money. Well, I mean, this is not a new system, as we all know. <laughs> yeah. This has been running. Uh, certainly the governor used it two, two cycles ago. Um, I mean, it does beg a question. I mean, it certainly begs a question. How, how big is enough, right? Yeah. Um, and um, I think that's probably one of the inherent problems with um, campaign finance, and it's the problem with the fact that, and, and maybe Senator King's question earlier, I mean, uh, legitimately, we can do all, all the races. We could, theoretically, but we don't have any, we're near the kind of money to even plan for that kind of uh, decision. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, Good way. I did that. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess my question is for Philip or um, the board. Uh, just trying to get a sense of whether or not other states have similar programs and whether or not there's been any lawsuits. I was kind of following uh, Senator Young's path. I was thinking, boy, this could turn into something really troublesome. Do we have any experience from other states with programs like this? And, and where do we fall if we do? Uh, did you want me to answer that? Yes, yeah, sure. Please. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, there are other states that have programs, public financing programs. Uh, uh, you know, there's Arizona, Maine has public financing. Connecticut has a public financing program as well. Uh, Where we have a public financing program, uh, so it, it's it's across the board. I, I think the difference is, uh, you know, the, in the I think the old system and our current system was that there was a grant um, that was given uh, to candidates in the for the general election, which is why you had to fully fund it because it was just here's a, a chunk of money they don't they don't fundraise. Uh, this is more of a rolling basis where they apply for monies as they get as they raise their monies. 
So it's it's not like there's a person one in one sitting or one filing is going to ask a request for three million dollars. They have to hit that hundred and twenty thousand dollar threshold first. You can have multiple candidates that actually hit that threshold and still be able to fully fund them all uh, across the board. Montgomery County uh, was a, a program here. And they, they put in a total of $11 million, I believe, for the entire election process. And uh, only a, f- a handful of candidates actually hit the threshold of being fully funded. Uh, I mean, reaching the max uh, of, uh, of that. Uh, because of its, once they hit the, the threshold to qualify, they were able to fundraise. But then, you know, everything else, uh, candidates and money sort of tends to go to one or two candidates, not a multiple of candidates there. So as it, as it went through, uh, the entire process was being able to, to ma- handle everyone's request as well as uh, have monies left over from the fund. And I think that they actually put, pared back their funding uh, from the 11 million uh, down to uh, 6 million or so. Um, for the for the for the primary, so it as uh, uh, and when you get to the general, that's even less candidates uh, that would be able to uh, meet, uh, meet the qualifications. Thank you. I don't know that I know anymore. I, I guess, Mr. Chairman, I was just trying to get a sense of whether or not through this uh, the the proposed bill whether we were moving in a direction that is consistent with what is happening in other parts of the country? Are we charting oh. a new course? Uh, I'm sorry. Then I, yes, then this is, this is the newer model. Yes, this, okay. is, this is the, the model that is going across the, the, the country right now. Uh, Montgomery County was the, the first one post. This is the post-Citizen United model, <laughs> which is uh, to... Uh, do a, a high level match uh, and uh, for small dollar contributions with a cap on the public contribution rather than an expenditure limit. Uh, this is so that candidates then, if there is outside money or being uh, to be spent against them, they can still raise from eligible sources for more individuals, uh, but they're just capped as to how much money that they would receive from the public. That's it. So this is the this is the current uh, model that is uh, moving across the nation. Got you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank Thanks. you. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I wrote it there. Yeah, uh, on that issue. I mean, I get the Citizen United issue, which is why you don't have the spending cap. Uh, but the limit, if if you participate in public financing under this bill, and all of a sudden, you know, the big boys come in and pour a lot of money in against you, the only money you can raise is in amounts from individuals capped at what amount per contribution or contributor? That is correct, right. You're, you're getting 200, you can only raise from $250 from individuals. Whereas if you don't participate in public financing, same thing happens to you, you can take your contributions up to the $6,000. Correct. But then you also don't get the match, too. No, no, so. I say you don't get the match, but the, the reason I raise it is, is that we're all, we all run campaigns. And the calculation, I mean, this is one of my problems with the way public financing has developed, not very successfully, is it creates these odd incentives for campaigns that have to predict the future and go one way or the other and then get locked in. So that's right. what I think. So, is. yeah, just to keep clarifying, because I, I think I understand. When, so what's the cap, again, that you can possibly get? The maximum? The maximum an individual can give to a candidate no, no, no. is $250, is a... and then the, the public contribution cap is $3 million. Okay, so the most that you could possibly get is $3 million primary and general? Primary, primary. and then $3 million for the general. Right, right, right. Okay, so, and, and I guess just to follow up on Senator Rosepep's question, so... You, you've you've gotten to the three million. You got your three million from the state, and the next dollar you raise, you still have to. Even though you're not getting any match at that point, you still get. You can only raise two two fifty. Correct. Right. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a calc. I mean, yeah, it's all about trying to make a calculation. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean that's why a lot of people don't do it. I mean, that's that's I mean, that's my view. I'm sorry. Right. And so again, just to re restate, on in in a situation where there are there are well. We don't say if we if we put nine million dollars in this fund, we're saying generally two primary, one general. But the reality is that twelve candidates could come in on the primary. Would it, would they could they go through the whole nine million? Because each of them, uh, there would only be three point eight currently available through the primary. So. Now, you, the additional four wouldn't come until after the primary. If this was fully funded at nine million dollars, is what? Oh, if it were fully funded, and there were a multitude of primary candidates, could they take from that to the point where there was no money available for the general candidates? As it long as they all they, they were all under three million dollars, mm -hmm. is that possible? It, that possible. might be possible because the, the the three million okay, is only to... the amount a campaign can get. It's not a cap on how much the program can match. But the uh, in the in the new fifteen uh, dash one hundred seven, it basically has that uh, regulations adopted by the state board shall authorize the distribution of the money in the fund on a continuing basis. So at that point there, the state board can, through regulations, hold back, say, $3 million or $2 million to make sure that there's some monies in the, the, the general. But that, that can be addressed through regs. I see. I see. But are those regs known up front? Would they, be? they would be right. I mean, yeah. Yes. I mean, just I mean, just to, to the Senator Rosebeth's point about calculation, knowing that at some point uh, you, you could not raise any more, knowing that money was being saved by the board for the the second round. Right. Yes. It's for Jared, I, I don't quite understand. The regs would be based on what? I mean, you, you got to make this would be before the primary, right? You'd be making a decision on how much you think you're going to have to spend in the primary, meaning you, the, the state board, how much money you're going to pay out in public money. You have to guess that to figure out how much to hold back for the general. I don't understand how that works. Well, I was just addressing the question that you asked there. Uh, the state board could, I mean, through regulations, would say, you know, if there was nine million in the fund, instead of having all nine million spent in the, the primary could say, you know, we're always going to withhold, you know, one for one candidate. So the, the maximum amount of funds available in a primary election will be six million. But that could be done beforehand and would have to be done through regs and the regulatory process. I understand the process, but let's try it this way. Forget new money. How much money is there now? 3.8. Total for primary and general. Correct. Okay, so let's say there's no more money put into it for next year. Right. How, how would the board figure out what was the right mix of dividing up well, the 3.8? Well, if you uh, basically, right now, only half of the 3.8 million is eligible for the primary election. That's current law. That's current law. So it's 1.7. Right is now available for the primary, and 1.7 is available for the general. Yes. And so the 1.7 for the primary goes out until it runs out, based Correct. on the formula. Right. And the money for the general goes out until it runs out. Well, we would just give the full amount to a candidate currently. Gotcha. Okay. I just want to say it. Thank you. Yeah. So, sorry that we're being... Uh... Not, not grabbing on as quick as we'd like. Um, so you, when you were just describing the current law, you said that it w the, the current money in there would be split between, is, is no matter what number in there, is it split between 
In current law, yes, it's one half is for the eligible for the primary. Okay, and and in this bill, does it change that? Yes, it just basically just says it's just the monies earn the fund on a continuing basis because it, instead you're you're perpetually raising it in smaller chunks, um, and so the. And your interpretation it's, it's, is it's that in, 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 the, in, the, in the current law system, you have a grant for the general election. So we gave, uh, like, Hogan, uh, Governor Hogan, a check for the full expenditure amount. Uh, and that's why that system is, that's why you had to hold back the money, because you had to give a full amount up front immediately. Uh, there is no way of replenishing the system, no way of uh, uh, basically uh, and, uh, getting monies back into this. So at the end, uh, from the primary, monies that are not spent by the candidates go into the system. You, you're, you know, the board is now having more revenue sources into the system as well than before. So it, it – and you're not uh, – the match, though, is it, it's a little bit harder to to get up front as well. So um, before you had to raise ten, you had to raise ten percent of the the funds. Now it's one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So yeah, um, I get that. That's that's good. I appreciate that. What I, but but you still believe though that under the new regime that this, this bill creates, that you would have or the board would have the authority to create regulation that would say at some point X amount is dedicated to the, to the general, even though that, 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 that strict half, half and half doesn't exist anymore, you feel like you have the regulatory authority to, to do that? Yes, I do, because, it's, because if the way it is now, it's like it adds and regulations adopted by the state board to authorize the distributions of the monies in the fund on a continuing basis. So. The, that that language there uh, would grant the state board at least some authority to uh, make sure that monies can be held in reserve for the general fund. I appreciate that, Senator Young. Uh, yeah, I, you talk about developing regulations. I I'm just a little confused. Uh, I know of three possible Republicans and eight possible Democrats whose names have been tossed around running for governor. I don't think all of them will, but out of that 11, what if seven of them run in the primary? Is it who comes first grabs? There's no fairness in each of them having a chance at an equal share of the money available? Um, and do you do it by party if there's seven Democrats running and three Republicans? That's 10 candidates for 1.4 million, or is that what you said? Or one point, whatever it was, so, 1.7. So there is a provision still there that basically, as it comes, as, as we start, just, I think as it gets closer to the end of the monies, at that point there, Proportional shares uh, are might be entitled to candidates, but I think if we've had this in the past in the, the last election in the and also in, in eight years ago, we had multiple candidates uh, uh, ask for public financing, um, and only so many qualified and out of the qualifications. Uh, only no one made the threshold, uh, reached the maximum in the, in the primary election. Uh, as, as you might remember, in 2014, we had two candidates that actually qualified for it, but we had multiple candidates actually apply for it. Um, and n neither one of them deplenished the fund in a way that the state board had to allocate or do proportional shares of, of the full contribution match because, you know, they, even though they were drawing down the same half, they never, they never got to the full amount. Um, 
So that, that's something that would be determined uh, as the fund gets depleted. Uh, there is the provisions in the, in the, the law that does allow for it. Um, and the state board would probably notify them when it gets closer to that only 10% of the fund remains for the primary or so. And then there are current regulations in place that describe the process of when the proportional shares uh, kick in. So there are proportional shares up front? Yes. And that's also, if you, uh, Senator, it, that's on page nine of the bill. So that's where I was talking about the regulations. And then it's in B, uh, 107B. Uh, the state board shall allocate the available money so that each eligible gubernatorial ticket in the election receives a proportional share of the full public contribution in which the gubernatorial ticket otherwise would be entitled. So lines 23 through 27, Senator? Yes. Okay. Uh, Senator Rosapep. On this issue, let's take next year. You got um, 3.4 million. If you divide it in half, it'd be 1.7 million for the primaries, 1.7 for the general. And you said it would give you authority, you have authority to keep a bunch of the money back and not give it in the primary to hold it for the general. I'm not asking you to predict what the board would do, but I'm trying to see conceptually how. How would they decide when they should stop giving money in the primary? I mean, would they set a goal of how much they want to keep for the general? I don't. I can't conceptualize how the decision would be made. I think that you would always want to have at least the ability to fully fund a general election candidate. What does fully so fund? That a, three, so that a candidate. That's three million, right? Right. So you'd want to have more monies for the primaries in the future and at least the three for the, the, the general. And I think that's why the law is written in a way that you put two for the primary and one for the general. And how are you expecting, maybe I missed a big idea here, how, you, how do you get from 3.4 to enough money to do six in the general? You, you, let, let me jump in on that. I mean, I, I actually thought when we, <laughs> I expected this to be a lot easier than, than sure. it's become. Um, a lot. Um, yeah, no. Um, so coming in here today, um, I had um, done done at least the, the research on the, the, the amount of money issue. Mm -hmm. And my expectation is that we were going to come in here and try to figure out a way to add up enough money that for the next election cycle that there would be $9 million in there. Oh, good. Okay? So I would be... Um, proposing that, that that amount of money would be available. Now, the initial point was that we do have a little cash flow issue um, and timing issue because of mandates. Now, we could simply just say that this is what we'd like the governor to do without mandating it. Right. And we would hope um, that he would do that. Um, that's certainly uh, one option. Um, uh, but all these other issues are new and and this was very informative. I thank you um, uh, for the information. Um, but I still come back to that point that I'd like to, and we don't have to do it this moment. And actually, we're not probably going to be able to do it this moment. May, maybe um, come up with a way to suggest to the governor and perhaps also mandate. I mean, we could mandate the three uh, in the twenty-three bu uh, budget. And that would work for the general. Yeah. Right? Is that true? Uh, well, the primary ends, right. It, it, I mean, it's right on the edge, right? Depending, we don't even know. We, we may be changing the date of when the primary is, too, which is another. But the, the 2002 general will be in FY23. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And that's my point. Yeah, yeah. So we could mandate the three for that and ask that the governor put an additional amount to the 3.8 for the primary um, in a supplemental at this point, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Right? If I could, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Senator Elfrith. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just briefly, if we don't do anything, the current law stands and the, the money is still available to 
to candidates. It just we're not going to have funded it, and we're not going to have reformed it to be a best practice. So that's right. The clock is ticking. Is my only point. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> uh, the, the clock is more my clock than anybody else right now, because <laughs> my, my hard stop is at five. But I mean, obviously, we we, we can come back. Um, but that was the goal that I was trying to get to. I still think that's the right goal. Um, to get that amount of money available. Uh, and so, um, Senator Rosapen. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going where you're going. But what we want to do is we want to somehow get six million for the general, and the off chance there are only two major party candidates in the general, right? So you need six million, three and three, is the way to think about it? No, I think what was being suggested is that, that we do, we somehow get six million in the primary so that at least two, theoretically. I mean, look, we just don't know how many. I and mean, this is the problem, right? And either we, we live with the system or we get rid of the whole thing, right? We have no idea how many primary candidates are going to no, be. No, I get the primary from, but the general we do. Right. That's right. But that assumes that if you put. That, right. That assumes that both of them were going to do that. I understand. I'm just trying to protect the options here. That's, that's what I'm saying. I, I understand. Okay. I, I wasn't going in that direction. I okay. think there was some. Uh, suggestion that we do um, two in the primary, two full loads, right, of three million dollars each, okay. which could easily be split up in smaller amounts. No, I see, I got it. Yep. And then one in the general, which in that case also could easily be split up into two amounts, and then they'd still have to live with the 250 limit beyond that, right? When you say one in the pri in the general, you mean three one full six load of three hundred three million dollars. Three million, not six million, is what you're saying. Correct. In the general. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Um, I still think, I think it was important to have this discussion. I know it was a little long, a lot longer than I expected, um, but I think we have a pretty good idea of sort of the lay of the land. Um, Senator Eckert. One more question real quickly, because I think I understand it too. How much money did the governor put in? I mean, did he put any in this year? Or is it only every four years money goes into the kitty or the fund? Uh, I don't believe any was appropriated this year. There's the, it gets funding from the checkoff and I think there may be a few other sources, Jared. I don't know if there's other sources. Yes, yeah, so it's the checkoff and then fines and Kennedy oh, filing cool. fees. So we have a couple of other different sources to kind of help replenish the funds. And but there's, I but think there's the last been, time the governor put any money in was uh, in his first or second year in his first term. And how much was that? Do I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that yeah. answer. I think it was only a couple of million dollars. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. I All just right. wanted a baseline of yep. what was there and what yep. we could do. Thank you. Yep. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to shut down for today. Um, again, thank you, uh, Jared. Philip. No problem. Appreciate it. Um, uh, we'll try to keep working on this. Does, does everybody have the goal that I set out? Does everyone have agreement with that goal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot. The, the body is not here. No, the goal, the goal was to get to a place where there's six million dollars available for the primary, and three million dollars available for the general. That. It's sort of just kind of almost a minimum minimum amount to say that we got a system that's actually in the position to function is is really what we're talking about here, in my opinion. So, do we do we like this goal? Let me see hands. Are people generally in favor of this or not? In generally in favor. Okay, so it's not much. Okay. Um, so is the idea that you're happy with uh, three point eight million dollars in this in this fund, and just it is what it is, 
and that's what. My bills get funded or not? Yes. It's all relevant. Well, I mean, it, it, it's a good point, right? I mean, it, we all have to face that um, reality. Um, and obviously, you know that I, I will do my best to try to make things work for everyone to the degree that we can, and we chip chip off a little bit from everybody so we can get to a good place, and but that's a different story. Senator Stalling. Thank you, Chair. Is the money split between the parties in the general? Is that how that goes? It could be if they both were, if both candidates were wanting to participate. Is that correct, Jared? Yes, uh, right. I mean, it's, it's, it's basically by candidate. It's not by party. So, okay. uh, you know, if a, re a Republican wants to take the money, then it's eligible for them. And if a Democrat wants to be in the, there as well, uh, it's, it's, it's there. It's, it's, it's not, a, you know, half of a half goes to the Republican Party and half and a half goes to the Democratic Party. It's, it's just if you're in the program, you're eligible to receive this money. First come, first serve. Regardless of party affiliation. It doesn't matter. Exactly. So whoever is for it first right. gets it well, first. Well, I mean, the idea is that for that, just prioritize whoever gets it first gets it first. That's it. They get, and, it, and they get it first because they're out there hustling yeah. to get those contributions to make their matches. It's not right. like they just say, give it to me now, and you get the whole. That's the old system, right? You could have stepped in right. and said, give me that $3 million up front, and that's the old system. I actually think this is an improvement. So if you're out there hustling and you're, you're building up your, your campaign, then you have earned the right to participate at higher levels. I actually think that that's actually, quite frankly, fairer than, than just giving out a whole amount. Senator. Oh, real quickly. Oh. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm have not been an advocate for public financing, but that being said, we've already made a commitment to it. We've already had a governor who's used it. And my thought is this is an improvement from what I can figure out. And if we're going to do it, then we need to do it right. And that's what I have to say. <laughs> well, and the question is, and I, and, and I agree with you, and I would say it has two pieces to doing it right. The policy, which I think is better, and then the price. And the price is complicated, which is because there's too many uncertainties about the costs associated with it. The question is, do we create a, I mean, do we think that it's reasonable to think that we get through a gubernatorial election with $3.8 million with multiple candidates tapping into a fund? And my sense is no, and that's why I was suggesting going to this um, this number um, that allows for theoretically two people in a primary to max and one person in general to max. Again, look, this is an EHE bill. <laughs> We're second on it, um, and uh, well, it's it's part of it. Yeah, right. Um, and we can do nothing. And that's fine. But know what we have. I mean, just acknowledge that what we've done is set up a system with that amount of money in it, and that's that. And that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm totally at the will on the committee on this. Um, I'm just trying to find a reasonable place. Senator Rosa. Thank you. I think there's a real distinction between the general and the primary. Because in the general, the candidates have, have been selected through a democratic process called the political parties. And there are only two of them. And so you, you, you know what you got. The primary is a whole different bag. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to think of them separately. And this has been one of my concerns over many years about how we do public financing. We kind of mush them together when the dynamics are very different. I'm not going to go at length about that, but I would put that issue on the agenda. Okay. Well, I do have to run. Yeah. Um, thank you all for your patience in all this. Um, I, it, it's important that we at least know what we're doing, if nothing else. At the end of the day, we know what we've, what we've set up and what we have created. All right, pensions tomorrow at 9.